today we're going to do what is called scale factor similar figures. Um, this is a seventh grade standard, one of those very few things I still have to teach you. Uh, can you be, Wendy, you got one? Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Wendy. All right. I want to be on this side. Some of you have holes on both sides of your paper because I changed my mind on which side I wanted to do first. So I flipped it. Uh, compared to period one. So everybody go to where it says scale factor finding sides. Okay, the first two should be the two triangles and then the two rectangles. These are the two shapes we should be looking at right now. Everybody, everybody. Okay. Um, it's pretty easy on the math. Not terribly hard. Not like super, super easy though. Um, but it's not bad. Okay. So scale factors, scale drawings are two shapes that are similar to each other. But they're different um, sizes, but they're proportional. So have you guys ever taken a picture on your phone and then like um, pinched it to make it larger or zoomed out on it, right? Like, oh, what, what's that? Um, what you were doing is actually creating a scale um, picture. Like you zoomed it in um, and made it bigger or made it smaller. That's a scale factor. Um, so let's say I take a picture of this triangle but I don't see it clearly. Like I don't see the person in the picture. So then I zoom it in and make it bigger. Does that make sense? So it's like you guys are used to like zooming things in and it's proportional. Have you guys ever um, played with a Hot Wheel? Yeah. The little cars? That is a replica of a real car. Like you can turn over. I wish I had one for my, I have like a thousand in my house because of my nephew. Uh, if I flip over a Hot Wheel at the bottom, it says, oh, this is a, you know, a must, a 2009 Mustang, right? And then, and it's actually two scale. So if I were to take that little Hot Wheel and multiply it by like 64, it would give me the life size Mustang. Okay. So all those Hot Wheels. And if you have one at home, flip it over and you'll see what, what it's called. And sometimes I'll put the scale on it. They'll do this one to two. Because their life's, they're to scale. Okay? It's pretty cool. There's math and everything. All right. So, what I need you to know about scale drawings is that the angles are equal. Okay? The angles are equal. It's the size of the sides of the sides. The size of the sides that are bigger or smaller. But the angles. So, if this angle's 30 this angle is 30 okay so the sides are the the angles are equal the sides with the d are not the same size with the z all right hopefully that confused you i was a little confused saying it okay let's do number one together scale factor a to b we have to pay attention to this um sometimes they flip it this one's a to b is one to two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a proportion. A proportion is two fractions that are equal to each other. We did some proportions on your homework. Oh here, the homework that you guys got back right now, these are proportions, right? We solve these by write and solve a proportion. These word problems are solved that way. These scale drawings are solved this way. Okay, so we're gonna write two fractions. We're gonna call the top the A's and the bottoms, the B's, okay? Do you remember how we talked about like the tops have to match and the bottoms have to match? Okay. Scale factor A to B is one to two. So where does, where, this first part becomes your fraction. So what goes on the top? What number? One. one. What goes on the bottom? Two. two. This gets literally plugged in there. Okay, easy enough? Okay. Now. We're going to solve for x. This part, x. What does x match up to in the small triangle? Five. Five. So if I were to make this triangle smaller, pinch it in to make it smaller, the x would turn into the five. Do you guys see that connection? Right? If I were to make the five, this triangle bigger, zoom out or pinch out, the five would become the X, right? Or vice versa. Does everybody understand that? So 
they're the same side of the triangle. This is the baby, and this is when it's grown up. Oh, how cute. Okay. The five is in the A triangle. So where do I put that? On the top or the bottom? Top. The Y, the X, I should say. The X is in the B triangle. So where do I put that? On the bottom. Okay, let's take a moment to understand what we just did. This one to two, we just plug it in, right? Now, if I look at triangle A, the five is from triangle A. The five is the same side as the X. They, they would correspond, they would lie right on top of each other. This is just the baby version of this one. This is the Hot Wheel version, and then this is the real life version. So they match. They're similar. Are they equal? No, they're similar. All right. How do I solve for X? There's two ways. The way that it always works is the butterfly method. The easier way to do it is to see if you have relationships. Now, if you want to do a relationship, by all means, do it. Let's just do some relationships. How do I go from one to five? One times five is five. Oh, so the relationship is I take one and I multiply by five and I get five. Oh, so what do I do on the bottom? Times five. Times five. So I take this and write this down so you understand what you're doing. I'm going to take the two and I'm going to multiply by five and I get X. What's two times five? So X is ten. Okay, now we gotta solve for y. So how do we start, first start off with? We first start off with our scale factor one to two. So I'm gonna draw another proportion. The top is gonna be my a's, my a triangle. My bottom is gonna be my b triangle. What's my scale factor? One to two, so one, to two, right? One to two, okay. Now, the Y. The Y side matches which side? The 12. Do you guys see how they would match if I shrink it or enlarge it, make it smaller, make it bigger? The Y and the 12 would line up, would match each other? Okay, the Y. Does it go on the top or the bottom? Top. top. You're correct. Why? <laughs> Why? Because it's from the triangle A. So Y is from triangle A, so the Y is going to go in the top because it comes from triangle A. A's go on top, B goes on the bottom. Okay, what goes on the bottom for 12? I mean, oh, I just told you. Yeah, good job. Boo. Yeah. So, do we understand how we set it up? Setup is the most important because if you don't set it up correctly, then everything's wrong. Everything's wrong. Okay, is there a relationship? Yes. If you don't see a relationship, you're going to do the butterfly method, but check it out. How do I go from 2 to 12? Times 6, write it down. Times 6. What is 1 times 6? So, y is 6. So y would be six. And do you see what we did? Didn't we just double the numbers? How do I go from five to, to the 10? Oh, times two. How do I go from six to 12 times two? So this is twice as big. This is just times two. All right, are we okay? Okay. I totally messed up number two first period. I was totally, totally, totally wrong. And what? happened was I read it too fast I went too fast and then someone's like Miss Amelia you I think you did it wrong and then I I, I got mad I was like oh, how dare you say why is Miss Gay on me I don't know where it is now. <laughs> all right let's continue this wonderful class so like I was saying I totally messed up on number two because I read it too fast the scale factor of Q 
cute to pee. What do you think I read? P to Q. Because I'm so used to going from this one to this one. I'm always used to going whatever's on the left to the right. I didn't slow down to read that it's supposed to be Q to P. And that's sometimes some of you do that on tests. You go too fast. And you make little mistakes, kind of like the do now where it says not. And you ignored me just like you are now. All right. So let's not make the mistake I did first period. I corrected myself. I had to do, um, you see, this is, I totally messed up first period. Totally was all wrong. And then I had to correct it on a post-it. That's how bad it was. I take out a post-it. Okay. So Q to P. So I have to write the Q on the top and the P on the bottom. Q on the top and P on the bottom. Okay? So what fraction do I write first? One over three, because that's what they give you. One over three. All right. Uh, which one do you guys want to do first? Do you guys want to do the nine? Okay. If I do nine, what does that match up to? The Y. So the side of 9 matches the Y side. Do you guys see that? Yeah. You see Y and all that? Yeah, get it. Okay. The 9, does that go on the top or the bottom? Yeah, because where is the 9 coming from? P. P. But what did Miss O'Malley do without thinking? She put it on the top, right? So we got to just go slow. The 9 goes on the bottom because it goes with the P. This is why you know how I tell you, like, show your work and label, and some of you are like, oh, why? What's the point? It's when this happens. It's like you'll catch your mistake if you put it on the top and you go, wait, 9 doesn't go with Q. Okay, what goes with Q? Y. Y. Okay, what's the relationship? So focus, Diego. Y, three to nine is times three. So one times three is three. So Y is equal to three. Oh, someone was calling me, but it's not, it's not Gibson. It's not Gibson. I got scared for a second. I got scared. I don't know if I'm scared for my student or scared for myself. I don't know. Maybe both. Okay. Um. All right. Let's do. Let's do X. Can you guys start X without me, please? What's our first fraction? Four. What's our first fraction? One over three. Okay. Now, which side haven't we done? Which side haven't we highlighted? Four, Four matches with what? I mean, feel free. I know you guys don't have highlighters, but feel free to like circle them bubble them in so you see the connection like you could go oh I'm gonna bubble in the nine what does the bubble match to oh it matches the Y so you can bubble it I know you don't have highlighters uh, okay so what's my second fraction well Q which number are we gonna use from the Q rectangle four what number are we gonna use from the P X There's a relationship, use it. There's a relationship, use it. Twelve. 
How do I go from 1 to 4? Times 4. So what do I do on the bottom? Times 4. All right. Uh, can you guys do number 3? Can you solve for x, not y? Solve for x on number 3, go. Solve for number number 3, solve for x first, go. Don't do y. Do x, go. Do x on number 3. What do you start with? With the proportion. Doesn't matter. You can solve for it. Solve for just x, not y. So S to T, S to T, S to T, All right? Did you do that? What's your first fraction? No. Whatever this is, plug it in. Okay. And I told you to solve for x, right? So what does the x match to? 20. Okay, so now we gotta figure out, okay, what number goes on the top and which number goes on the bottom? S goes on top, which number is the S? 20. What number is the T? X. Gee, I wonder if we don't get it because we're not paying attention. Okay, let's do y together. Y is going to be a decimal. <gasps> so? Uh, seriously, seriously. It's like Miss Gibson called for you guys. That's how your guys are reacting. <laughs> like, gasp. All right, first part. What's your first fraction? You all know four over one. Okay. You can do the second fraction. The second fraction is not hard. The second fraction doesn't give you a decimal. You're just going to write a fraction. What's my second fraction? 10 over, Ten over y. Okay. So far, same thing, right? Now, is there a relationship from 4 to 10? No. 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 So when you say no and you can't simplify this, your answer is going to be a decimal. You already... That's like a little secret. Like if you know that there's no relationship, you're walking into an answer that's gonna be a decimal, which is fine. It might give you a calculator. You never know. Okay, the only way you can solve when it comes to decimals is the butterfly method. There's no other way. So what is the butterfly method? If you don't remember, circle this. What do we have here? Four times y. What is four times y? Very good, thank you for paying attention. Equals. The other circle, 10 times 1, 10. This is called the butterfly method. Whatever you circle gets multiplied together. Whatever you circle gets multiplied together. Now we're going to do a one-step equation. How do I move the 4? Divide by 4, divide by 4. Y equals, I don't know, let's do it over here. 10 divided by 4. What is it? Mm-hmm. No.
Huh? Are we okay? Okay. That was the hardest one. What I want you to do right now, I'm going to take, uh, give you guys about a couple minutes, and then we're moving on. I want you to do all of number four, all of number six, and I just want you to solve for why on number five. Just why. Okay? So all of number four, all of number six, and just why for number five. Uh, the other one's a decimal. I mean, you're more than capable of doing it. All right, so I should see you guys. First thing, fractions, proportions. Go. Wait, isn't a fraction in fourth? Huh? Isn't a in no. Wait, which one are we doing? Four, six, and just y for number five. So I need x and y, x and y, and just y. You're literally doing the same thing we did for number one and number two. So follow along. Look at your notes. Look at mine. Mine look really crazy, really colorful. Remember, this first is your first fraction. Go. I'll just randomly sit a random desk. Just randomly. Nowhere in particular for no reason. I just randomly sat here. You should be able to write me the first fraction by now. Boom, right? There's no math involved with the first one. I can't remember. Did you set up your first fraction? Okay. hard ones to do. I gave you the pretty easy one.
If you don't plug in the numbers correctly, everything is wrong. So, okay. You still working? How many of you are done? sure the room is clean for tonight. Okay, we can do our journey, Trisha. Yeah, especially because I have to talk to you about you and Brian behavior at the beginning of the class. All right. To the back. To the back. To the back. Okay, everybody stop and go to the back. Everybody stop and go to the back. I'll give you time to finish if you haven't finished, but I want you to go to the back. Now, these are uh, the same but different. They're the same in the setup. And you're still going to be using a proportion. Let's call this one A and B. The difference, Edwin, in these is that they don't tell you the scale factor is 1, colon 3 or 1 colon 2 they just give you all the numbers on the shape and we want to solve for this one so it's a little bit different because again they don't tell you that do you see this part right here scale factor left to right is 1 to 3 they don't tell you that they just give you just the shapes so it's a little different but the same okay we're going to put the a's on the top and the b's on the bottom okay A's on the top, B's on the bottom. Label everything. Follow along. All right. Let me highlight the 30. What does the 30 match up to on the B? 40. Okay, let's write that as a fraction. The 30 matches with the 40. Let's write the fraction. So what fraction did you write down? A, 30. B, 40. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what does the 36 match up to? The question mark. 36, top or bottom? Question mark or now X goes on the bottom. Okay. Do you see how this one's a little bit different on the setup but yet the same? All right, now, is there a relationship between 30 and 36? No. no. Can I go from 30 to 40 anywhere here? No. no. So there is no relationship. Mm, darn. But before you call it a decimal, there's one more thing you have to look at. Can you simplify it? Yes. So if I simplify 30 and, and 40, what can I do by 30 and 40 by? 10. Divide this by 10. Divide this by 10. Divide that by 10 and divide that by 10. So now this is 3 and this is 4. I like to circle it so you see that. Oh, I, I got new numbers because I simplified. Yay me. Okay, we okay? Now, now is there a relationship? Yes. Yes. Now is there a relationship, not from 30, but now from three. Focus. How do I go from three to 36? Times 12. Times 12. Now, there is a relationship here times 12. So what am I going to do it to the bottom? 4 times 12. So what is x equal to? So if there's no relationships, before you think before you think decimal, think simplify. And 
If you can't simplify, then it's a decimal. Okay? It looks harder than what it is. All right, let's look at number three. Number three, number three, number three. You can do number three. Set it up. A, B. Set it up before I do. Before you start doing math, math, set it up. A's on the top, B's on the bottom. A's on the top, B's on the bottom. Go. What's my first fraction? What's my bubble in the sides that match? One matches with 20. Oh, that's going to sound great on the video. Okay, so 20, 24x over 54. Okay, is there a relationship between 24 and 54? No. Simplify. So when there's no relationship, simplify it. Okay, what can I simplify 20 and, 50, and 24 by? Four. Four is better. Two works. Four is better. Always pick bigger numbers. So divide this by four, divide this by four. Five and six, love it. Five and six. Now, is there a relationship between six and 54? Yes. yes, times nine. Now, if you're not really good at multiplication, you don't see nine, then you're gonna have to do the butterfly method. If you don't see the relationships, butterfly method always works. What's five times nine? 45, and you're done. All right, I want you to do number four. Number four, A and B. Fourteen thirty-five. Perfect. Fourteen thirty-five. A B A B. All right. What's my second fraction? X over fifteen. Okay. Is there a relationship? How? Wait. Wait. So, is there a relationship here? Nope. Nope. So we have to simplify. And a lot of kids don't see that it is divided by 7. So if you didn't see it, do it now. Solve it and finish the back. You can't do 14 divided by 7? Come on, come on, man.
to take everything down and have to do the math for your state test. Oh no. Why would you do it? Because the state test, like, I can't have anything else that has anything to do with math. Yeah. Your phone, if you take out your phone during the state test, I gotta report it. Like, the state test is the one that you, you can't mess with. What about music? No. What's the next song? You can't have any electronic devices. I know. Yeah, because I don't know if you're listening to the multiplication table on your phone. So like, for <laughs> yeah, multiplication on repeat. Um, which would be a great idea. Maybe that's how I'll hit million dollar views. Um, yeah. So for the state test, be prepared. There's like no electronic devices at all. You can't even wear um, a smartwatch. Like it's it's locked down. No smartwatches. No not like zero. And because um, I got to report it uh, if you do.